Hello and welcome to the Multicultural AFL Footy Show. Friday night saw Geelong defeat the West Coast Eagles for the right to play Richmond in the preliminary final. And GWS were lucky to hang on and beat Brisbane by three points under controversial circumstances. The Giants play Collingwood next Saturday. We will review all the finals in detail from last week and those reports involving both winning sides. Tonight, we also interview the Victorian AFL Multicultural Community Ambassador of the Year, Nabil Yassin. I am Vanessa Katika, and I'm joined by my two co-panelists, Javier Sincan and Gabriel De Angelo. Hello, guys. Hello, Vanessa. Vanessa, Javier. Right. On Friday night, Geelong thoroughly beat the Eagles in the final quarter, but I couldn't help thinking that Willie Rioli's suspension affected the West Coast team as they played with broken spirit. The Cats didn't escape without their own troubles as Tom Hawkins got himself suspended for a behind-the-ball indiscretion for striking the Eagles Will Scofield to the head. Is this the last we see of Hawkins this year or what are your thoughts on the game, Javier? Well, it might be. I'm uh, not too sure about that. But um, I think what he did was sort of wrong um, and Schofield, he uh, went on the floor as well, so he stayed there for some time, so that, that wouldn't help his cause. Uh, on the other note, I, the actual game, I, I do uh, sort of agree with um, you saying that really, really, like they, they, they were a bit down uh, without that, and it, it couldn't come at the worst time than that. Um, same thing like what happened with uh, GWS, Stephen Cornelio signed up at the right moment, and that sort of got the momentum in, in the place. And this one came at the wrong time, probably for West Coast, where um, they sort of lost their momentum a little bit, and maybe not, maybe they might have forgotten him um, in their minds when the actual game started. Aside, but definitely he was missed on the field too. So the kind of moves he, he would have made and everything. So I think that that was a huge factor uh, in West Coast losing. However, can't take anything away from um, Joel Selwood the way he played. Um, like Warrior, he, you could see him, blood coming out and mm. still he wanted to <laughs> be there. And then on the other hand, Patrick Dangerfield, he just proved to everyone now uh, why he's he, such a good player. And a lot of contested marks and everything. I think he, he although everyone else contributed, but he sort of single-handedly uh, made Geelong win. Mm. And Hawkins at the front, he did all right too, so I, surely he's going to be missed. Well, yes, but in terms of uh, Willie Rioli, I mean, Yes, he's a fantastic player and he adds a lot of dynamic up front. But the, the thing is, West Coast won the, the grand final last year without Nick Natanui and, and Gaff. So, yeah, yeah. you know, they can do just fine without some of their better players. So, you know, of course he's a very good player and all that, but they still have a lot of talent to mm -hmm. um, supplement the, those ones that are missing. So, you know, if anything, it, it seemed like Geelong wanted it that little bit more. It's almost like West Coast sort of ran out of petrol tickets. Like, they just had a little bit too much. But um, I have to give a lot of credit to Geelong because I thought West Coast were going to win Definitely, that game. Yes. Yes. Like, yes. before and during the game, I thought they were going to win. So you have to give them credit. And Tom Hawkins, I mean... It really, it, it's it's a you know it's a final. You have to think, and the way he just went at Schofield, you know, even when he was on the ground and talking to him and apologising, yeah. you, you can tell he knew he was yes, in deep trouble. So, yeah. yeah, he's got to be a little bit smarter than that, and I do think he's going to to miss out. But um, we'll discuss that later. The other final was played at the Gaba between Brisbane and the Giants. GWS came off the blocks with a four-goal burst but were soon cut back by the Lions. Brisbane's Charlie Cameron suffered an hyperextended elbow, but was brave enough to play on. He was also involved in a controversial incident when an opposition player deliberately targeted his injury, not in the spirit of the game, said an umpire. The GWS Giants were lucky with the last goal of the night were from a stoppage. A GWS player threw the ball from the pack into the hands of Brent Daniels, who scored the winning goal. And the giant Toby Green back in the wars with another report, and this time a one-week suspension. Green's back-to-back -back charges of making unreasonable and unnecessary contact to the eye region of the Lions' locking hill. Gave a view of the game and, what, and that report. It was one of the best games that I can remember in a, in a long time. It was fantastic. It really had everything. It was close. Uh, there was a, su a suspension. There was a retirement. There was controversy. There was all sorts of things. It was a really, really good game. Um, I feel 
really sorry for Brisbane, not just because of the season that they've had where they've just done so, so well and exceeded everybody's expectations, but to lose in the way that they did, where their last goal, that was a throw. You know, that should have not have been included. And, and I feel really sorry for them because they, they would have won that game if that wasn't, you know, wasn't given as a, as a goal. But there are some other things that, uh, that's, that really, really annoyed me about the game, more so the umpiring, apart from that glaring mistake, but also the fact that Charlie Cameron, yes, he was injured and he was playing with the injury and all that, but if, if an opposition player wants to hit, the, hit his arm to make it worse, well, bad luck. That's what, you know, he, it's, it's a contact sport. Mm. If I'm an opposition player, I'll do whatever I can to make the other guy, you know, be as uncomfortable as possible. But it's not legal. But, you know, Brisbane Lions, they did the exact same thing to Nick Rewalt when he was injured, when he had arm problems. Um, Mal Michael kept um, not, you know, hitting him in his arm. So, you know, they're not exactly angels themselves, um, Brisbane Lions, in that, in that case. But um, it's just a part of the game. Also, Toby Green, he's just... The, the words can't really express the, the disappointment in, in Toby Graham. We were talking about it last week. We were talking yes. about how he's a fantastic player. He's really, really good and all that. But he does some really, just, you know, really stupid things. Mm-hmm. I mean, he did the exact same thing this week, last week. Mm-hmm. I mean, in, in this game against Brisbane. I mean, he just doesn't learn. And, and, and it's almost like it, it really does feel like he doesn't actually learn from the mistakes that he's causing. Mm-hmm. And, and it's just ridiculous. He's a thug. Yeah. Well, I, I agree with Toby Green. Uh, I mean, he came out last time. He wasn't really apologetic. So he probably got that script written from the, all the previous charges that he's had. So he's probably read, he reads the same script. Oh, yeah, I feel ashamed. I uh, shouldn't have done that. Mm. And the worst part is he did the same thing, as you yeah. mentioned. It's, it's not, not, not uh, the idea was the same to hit him on the eye region aside. So that's what he did last week. Yeah. So he's not going to change. So I, I, I don't really get the idea like where uh, uh, Christian has said that he's looking at that incident in the isolation aside. And on the one hand, we, we got Empire, which is saying uh, what, um, that it's not in the spirit of the game. Stephen May uh, having a beer, like it's, he gets into a trouble over mm-hmm. there. And that, that, that's more like showcasing that they are AFL ambassadors, they are players, they, they, they uh, have some image to protect. And when it comes to Toby Green, it, 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 it's not there. Like yeah. uh, a few of the uh, big names are saying that he's all right, but you have to look at that. Like w- what exactly he wants to do, and he's he's just trying to be a bad boy. That's yeah, all. Yeah. And so otherwise, cool. like as you mentioned, that was a great game, though. Like, like that's how the final should be played. And I must say, full credit to GWS Giants. They yeah. sort of bullied the uh, young teams. First they did to the Bulldogs and uh, now to uh, Brisbane Lions as well. They came back, but still, it wasn't enough. The sad part is, as you mentioned, that throw should have should have been um, should have been a goal. Mm. So yeah, in all, it was a great great game. Then. Yeah. It was a great game. Thank you, boys. Coming up, our interview with the AFS Victorian Multicultural Ambassador of the Year winner, Nabil Yassin. Following this short break, you're watching the Multicultural AFL Footy Show. Welcome back. Tonight we have Nabil Yassin, the AFL's Victorian Multicultural Community Ambassador. Nabil has been instrumental with the implementation of the D-Road umpiring squads in Northwest Corridor of Melbourne. In 2019, Nabil was the voice of the community welcoming 20 new participants to the first AFL Multicultural D-Road umpiring academy in Victoria. By the end of the program, he had successfully transitioned 15 new multicultural umpires into the EDFL umpiring community hub. Welcome to the show, Nabil. Thank you, Vanessa. Nabil, tell us about your role as an AFL multicultural community ambassador and the work you do and how did you get involved in the role? Well, an AFL uh, multicultural community ambassador is uh, someone who gets involved with the promotions, the events and the functions that the AFL um, provide. Um, and obviously trying to invite the uh, multicultural community um, into, into um, the footballing environment. Um, the work I do is really uh, simple. Uh, we get involved uh, with people um, that are really passionate about sports and AFL in particular um, and really just want to uh, be a part of the great game. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, talk to us about the D-Rod squad like, as in, and how is this helping all the multicultural people 
to um, become good umpires or learn with their uh, umpiring? Well, um, there's a lot of uh, multicultural youth that are interested in football and playing the game. Um, but the interesting thing is that we don't have many, um, I guess, youth being involved in other parts of the game. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, where it comes to officiating the game, and this more in particular with, with umpiring um, and getting involved, um, <coughs> this, this program has helped transition a lot of um, uh, potential players or even people that have never played the game before um, mm -hmm. into uh, the game of AFL. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's probably been the best part about it. What does it mean to you to be an AFL Multicultural Community Ambassador? Uh, for me, honestly, it's been uh, a real motivator for me to get involved because um, as a young, uh, I guess, uh, multicultural person uh, <laughs> uh, living in Victoria um, and I guess, you know, becoming a part of the Australian culture um, and, and understanding what, you know, sports really means um, um, to, to the people uh, in this country um, and how I can get involved. Um, I inv got involved first playing the game um, and building so many great relationships um, at my local football club, uh, teaching me how to kick the ball um, and, uh, and get involved with, with, with the game, um, sort of helped me cling on to AFL as a sport. Mm -hmm. um, but really um, getting, getting people involved in sport, especially AFL, um, you know, in any way possible has helped, I guess, bring a smile to my face. Um, if I could poss possibly change, you know, one person's life, um, you know, by getting involved with in AFL would be would be amazing. So, yeah. And what advice would you give uh, people of different multicultural communities to um, who wants to come and see the football, or they want to be part of that uh, multicultural investor program? Well, honestly, there's there's heaps of opportunities to get involved, uh, and and I guess the AFL multicultural community program is is one of those you know, programs that you can get involved with, whether it's umpiring or even, you know, touching base with a local club um, and doing some volunteering, whether it's timekeeping, you know, being an umpire escort um, and just helping out just to understand what the game is like. I, like I can remember when I first started playing the game of football, I was playing on, on a field and, um, you know, the, the ball went out of bounds on the full and I completely was dumbfounded looking at looking at the umpire <laughs> asking him, you know, wh why, why do they have the ball? So, um, you know, I guess I learned through playing. Um, and there's, there's, you know, there's multiple opportunities and the AFL um, provide heaps of programs that, that you know, allow people to do that. Mm -hmm. How does one apply to join the Ambassador Program, Nabil? Well, I, I joined through a social media post uh, a few years back. Um, and honestly, you know, getting involved with the program and, and meeting uh, people that uh, were of like-minded uh, personalities as well um, allowed me to, um, I guess, flourish as a community ambassador. Um, there are a lot of people that get involved um, and then you know, tailor off to a particular community group um, or even a football club which we're assigned to um, and actually you know, uh, I guess um, move towards a lot of the programs that, that, um, that they offer um, or even potentially come up with some great ideas that you know, the AFL might actually pursue um, and you know, we could be, we could be you know, running an initiative that you know, you've created. Um, I guess the D Dear Rod Squad is one of those programs that we've started from you know, the ground up um, and thankfully um, we're, we're, seeing, we're seeing some of the fruits now. So. Thank you. So as you know, Nabil, it's preliminary finals time. So I just wanted to know before you leave, who's going to win in the first match between Richmond and Geelong and by how much? Well, it's a tough one. They're both uh, pretty good teams, um, but I'd probably tip uh, Richmond just because um, they're, they're the informed team so far, so. By how much? Uh, probably we're looking at around maybe 24 points. Okay. Okay. And what about Collywood was a GWS Giants? Uh, I reckon GWS, based on their last game. Mm -hmm. um, but it'd be tough for them, I guess, with uh, Toby Green out. Um, but I still think they'll, they'll get up. What about the points? Point difference, probably five points. Okay. Close one. Nabil, who going to win the grand final? Uh, Richmond. Richmond, okay. And the North Smith medal? Basher Hooley, hopefully. Basher Hooley. And the Brownlow medal? Lock in from Brisbane. Okay, awesome. Good, good answers. Thank you. Thank you for being on the show. That was Nabil Yassin, the AFL's Victorian Multicultural Ambassador of the Year. We will be back with our preliminary finals, previews, and tips next on the Multicultural AFL Football Show. So stick around. <laughs> Welcome back. On Friday night, the Geelong Cats take on Richmond Tigers from the MCG in what promises to be a hard, tough, close encounter. 
the loan comes into this form last week's demolition of the West Coast in the last quarter, while the Tigers had a week's rest and a jumping out of the skins to secure a grand final berth. Your preview and thoughts, Javier? Well, I believe it's going to be a close game if Geelong can uh, keep up their ante, what they did against the West Coast. Uh, but I believe Richmond are, uh, mm. to me, they are on different level at the moment. And the way Dustin Martin has come back into form and the way he's playing, I think uh, even Patrick Dangerfield in that game might not be a match for him. Mm. Uh, although I believe it's going to be a hard-fought game, especially in the middle area. But Richmond's got too many stars at the moment mm. who, who are playing their role so fantastically. I believe it's going to be too hard. Uh, so... I, there's one good thing about Geelong was they've been uh, having that issues in the first quarter, which they sort of overcome last week. So they were able to uh, demolish uh, the other team in the first quarter. So they've been a good third and fourth quarter, but first quarter they've been struggling. So they've done that. So they've sort of uh, got the, one of their problems sorted. But I believe it's going to be a ruck issue as well. Uh, I think... Nankar is going to be back and uh, he, he might have an <coughs> edge on that. And then I believe the midfield going to have edge at that. And with Tom Hawkins out, I, uh, I think it's going to be an uh, easy job for the um, Richmond defenders. And it's going to be a very hard uh, job with uh, Lynch at the front, Revolt at the front. And mm. uh, you, you can see, as you mentioned before, like they, you can see that hunger in that team. So I, they, they really want to do uh, win this. Uh, I'm not saying Geelong doesn't want to because Gary Ablett probably want to retire uh, because, so. yeah, his batchmate is, uh, Luke Hodge is gone too. Uh, so uh, it's, it's, they, want the, uh, they want to win too, but I don't think they have that energy and capacity and all those players to um, topple, um, to topple uh, Richmond at the moment. So I believe Richmond going to come on top. Mm. Well, yeah, I mean, with the Tom Hawkins issue, I mean, the, the bad news for Geelong is that he'll be unavailable for the game. Uh, the good news for Vanessa is Tom Hawkins will be available uh, on the weekend. But with, with um, Richmond, they, they just seem to be more of a unit, more of a team than Geelong. Geelong, these past few games, it's almost like they've been relying on maybe one or two mm. of their big men or of their, of their best players. I mean, Selwood last week, he was fantastic. He had a real captain's game. And the week before that, Patrick Dangerfield, he was sensational. Mm. But... When it comes to a group effort, Richmond have just got their bases covered. I mean, Hawley, uh, you know, Butler, you just said their forward line, mm -hmm. Rewalt and uh, Lynch, they're just working so perfectly at the moment. Mm -hmm. I genuinely, I, I can't see an avenue for Geelong to win this game. I'm not saying that Richmond are far superior, but it's just that when you can consider all the different options and the way that they're going and form-wise and everything, it's hard to go against Richmond. So for me, I'm going to say Richmond, and by about maybe 35 points, I actually do believe that really? Richmond are, are well and truly on their way to um, possibly another uh, grand final victory, um, the way they're going. I just think they're just too sharp at the moment. The, the way Geelong won against West Coast, fantastic victory. I'm not taking anything away from it, but it just seemed like they, they were sputtering towards the line. It was like Geelong and West Coast were both extremely tired, but West Coast were more tired than Geelong. That's mm. basically about it, if you understand what I mean. So for me, Richmond are going to win. I want to say Geelong. Yeah, sure. I think <laughs> Savara Tigolea could be the key for the for yeah. Geelong. Well, him and a few others, they're, they're due for it. Because, yeah. the, like I said, you know, Geelong haven't really been... Uh, some of the, the key players like Radigalia, Kelly and a few, and Ablett even, yeah. haven't really been um, strong this um, final series. I think Dangerfield really want to win this. Oh, yeah. yeah. Of course. But I think, Gary, Gar I think we, we are probably expecting one good game from Gary Ablett. I hope that might be this one. It could be, but that's the thing. There's one good player, or one good game from one good player, but whereas Richmond, yeah. they're just too mm -hmm. much of yeah. a team at the moment. The next preliminary final, we take a look at Collingwood facing off against the GWS Giants from the MCG on Saturday. Now we know that over a decade, the Giants have lost 18 of their 22 games at the MCG. Not a very good record. An even, even bigger hurdle is playing Collingwood in front of 98,000 fans with a grand final berth at stake. I cannot see how the Giants can manufacture a win, Gabriel. I agree. 
uh, really, like at the beginning of the, the year, I did say I thoroughly believe that GWS are going to be in the grand final this year. Whether they're going to win or not is another thing. But I thought that GWS were going to have a preliminary home final and then they'll make it. But at the MCG, GWS, they, they just go missing. It, it's, it's ridiculous how GWS are capable of doing well in other grounds and even when they play in Victoria when they play at Marvel Stadium mm. but when it comes to the MCG they just go missing whether it's because the ground is too big and they go lost I don't know but it, it's a huge huge task for the GWS to beat Collingwood in the, at the MCG but what I really really like about GWS is this is what I'm looking forward to the most is the key matchups between Collingwood's forward line who are really, really good, really, really sharp, and GWS's defence. Their defence against Brisbane was spectacular. Yep. It was probably the key to that win because Brisbane just kept bombarding and bombarding and bombarding, and the big men at the back, they kept winning marks, mm -hmm. they kept um, going out of the defensive area without any mistakes, they didn't panic, they were just amazing. I thought GWS's defence was just so rock solid against Brisbane, they were amazing, and they're going to be needed um, really, really badly against Collingwood. So we'll see what's going to happen there, but I really do believe it's going to be a really key uh, match up between the Collingwood forward line and the GWS defence. Who's going to crack? We'll see. But obviously you've got amazing players like Jeremy Cameron uh, who's in really good form as well up at the forward line of uh, GWS. But Collingwood at home with the home crowd mm. playing at the MCG, I think Collingwood are just going to be a little bit too strong and I'm going to say by about 35 points. Okay, yeah, look, it's going to be, uh, starting from the ruck, I think it's going to be a very good competition uh, with Shane Monford against Brody Grundy. Mm. I'm, I'm looking forward to that because Brody Grundy is the, one of the best ruckmen ever. Yeah. Yes. And uh, I believe Shane Monford, the way he sort of tackles, I, I would really like to see how Brody Grundy tackle, tackles him. And then uh, Collingwood got all their ammunition. They, they, they've got the players, they've got the players which can sort of match up. And I think that will be one team. Um, they, they've got the experience. Um, they've got the technique. Um, they are in good form too. So they, they're not going to get bullied uh, by GWS Giants. Make no mistake. So it's going to be a cracker of a, a game as far as if, if it starts that way, like as in uh, hitting other, uh, other uh, teams' players or so. so. But I believe, as you said, um, with that much of a home crowd and everything, I think Collingwood's going to come on top. And by, for me, it's going to be 20, 25 points. Thank you. A quick one, boys. You trifecta for the Brownlow medal next Monday. The names don't have to be in order, no discussion, just the names. Well, for me, it's Patrick Dangerfield, uh, Lockie Neal, and uh, Marcus Bondapelli. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I was good. Yeah, I totally agree. Lockie Neal, Dangerfield, I, I don't think Bontempelli, I think you're just saying that. But uh, um, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I think it, it's going to be between them two. I don't think anybody else is going to come close. I think it's going to be between Lockie Neal and, and Dangerfield. That's how confident I am. Mm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. We shall see who wins. I hope your team wins on the weekend. We thank you, our guests for tonight, the Victorian AFL Multicultural Community Ambassador, Nabil Yassin. That's all we have for you this week but we will be back next week with our grand final preview. You've been watching and listening to the Multicultural AFL Footy Show all around Australia on the Community Radio Network, Community TV, and on Aurora TV Foxtel. We are also online through the NENBC's AFL Footy website. See you next week. I am Vanessa Gatica. I'm Herbie Singh. I'm Gabriel D'Angelo. And thank you for watching.